What's the word, y'all? Let's talk about this NBA All-Star Reserves. Here's a player pool. Team Giannis versus Team LeBron. LeBron Giannis. went against the Clippers, you know, fueled a 20-point comeback, and they asked him about draft of Drew Holiday. He said he's not going to give up his, his plans for the draft. Giannis is drafted terribly every single year. So I hope he got a new strategy because Bron been kicking their butt on that side. Anyway, the Western Conference reserves Paul George, Shea, Jaron, or is it Shy? We're going to keep saying Shea until he stops playing around. Jaron, Dame, Lowry, Ja, and Demont Sabonis. Out east, we got Bam, Jalen Brown, DeMar DeRozan, Joel Embiid, Tyree Taliburn, Drew Holiday, and Julius Randle. Now I'm watching this at the NBA. Um, and of course, I have my own ballots, just like everybody else in the world. And there were four names that were mentioned, you could probably guess the four, that I was surprised that actually made it. And this is going to lead to the conversation of snubs. This person deserved it over this person. Out East, DeMar DeRozan's name is, I think, the second name announced. And I was genuinely surprised. And I do want to say, I'm not taking anything away from the people that we mentioned as surprises, because everybody that was named are, are having all-star caliber seasons, in my personal opinion. I just thought that there might be people out in their conferences that might deserve it a little bit more. But that doesn't mean that that person was having a bad season or the undeserving i just think maybe a person just deserves a little bit more and demar rosa is one of the guys for the eastern conference now uh, i've been getting a lot of cri criticism amongst bulls fans are saying i'm too hard on my own favorite team but that's what fandom is for me um and demar rosa has been having a good season you look at the stats from last season to this season he's having a relatively similar season the differences are he's not the clutch player in the nba this season like last year he would have taken home that clutch player of the year award unanimously and the bulls are back simple as that you know, he's still averaging 26 points per game. He still can close out a game here and there. He still got two potential game winners that he got fouled on that the refs. But on my own personal ballot, I didn't have him. I had Pascal Siakam. Now, it's going to get all wonky because you can talk about positions. DeMar DeRozan on the NBA official site was listed as a guard, but he might have got in as a forward. He might have got in in a wild card spot. I, I, don't, I don't actually know. But I'm looking at the reserves, and I'm assuming that Jalen Brown and Tyrese Halliburton were the two guards. Front court ended up being Joel Embiid, Bam Adebayo, and Julius Randle. And that would have meant that the, the wild card spots for the Eastern Conference ended up being DeMar DeRozan and Drew Holiday. That's my assumption. I can't say for sure because they, they never release the ballots for when the coaches are voting. Because let's be real, the coaches, all 30 of the NBA head coaches did not put out a ballot. They gave it to the assistant, who gave it to an assistant, who gave it to a ball boy, and they put out an official ballot. When you compare DeMar DeRozan and Pascal Siakam, the, the one thing that DeMar DeRozan has over Pascal is his efficiency. And that the Bulls are better, I mean, it's, it's by two games. You know, it's not it's not like the Bulls are the five seed and, and Pascal and them are the 15th seed. It's not by a ton, but everything else, the playmaking, the creation, the defense, Pascal has that pretty handily on DeMar DeRozan this season. And when it comes to counting stats, Pascal's only averaging one less point. So it, it was a bit it was a bit weird to see him over Pascal Siakam. And if we want to get into some super nerdy stuff, which I, it's not a place for that on this channel necessarily. Damn near every single one of the advanced stats are in the favor of Pascal Siakam offensively and efficiency. Again, the, uh, DeMar DeRozan does have the efficiency, but advanced statistics as far as how much he's impacting the game offensively and defensively, Pascal has that. And the second aim out east. I love me some Drew Holiday early in the season. I had him on my all-star ballot, but out the course of the season, he fell out. This man, Drew Holiday, was announced as an all-star on Inside the NBA, a, a show that has like 100 producers, editors, and everything, people that prep this stuff. Drew Holiday got announced, and they didn't even have a highlight package for him. They didn't even have a highlight package ready. He came out with the, with the money in the bank briefcase out of nowhere to take this all-star spot. But again, I'm not saying he's unworthy of this spot, but when, when I look out east, and I'm looking at wild card, I'm looking at guard spot, undoubtedly in my mind James Harden deserved it more you can even make an argument that Jalen Brunson had uh, deserved it more but I understand that that some of the coaches might be looking at the standings oh okay the Knicks are this and the the Bucks are this and Drew Holiday has been consistent with, with Chris Middleton being out and yada 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 we're gonna we're gonna favor the team with the more wins to give them two all-stars versus the team that has less amount of wins to give them two all-stars and it's always weird to see what the coaches prioritize on the season it seems like with a pick like drew holiday and a pick like jaron jackson jr this season they prioritize the defensive side of the ball which i can't be mad at because you, you saw yesterday against the clippers drew holiday is still a premier level defender he still might be the best perimeter defender in all of basketball and jaron jackson jr has been the best rim protector in basketball this season so i understand if that's what they were going for but outside of that james how i got Drew holiday beat on damn everything like everything Again, the, the gap between Drew Holiday's defense and James Harden's defense is, is gargantuan. 
But again, I do believe that James Harden might have deserved it a little bit more of a Drew Holiday. It's a cool story, though. Um, I think it's been 10 years since Drew Holiday has made an all-star appearance, and I think that is the largest gap in the history of basketball. So that's kind of a cool story. But again, I can't be too, too upset because in my mind, Drew Holiday is having an all-star caliber season. This is not a season that's any more ridiculous than any Drew Holiday season. I mean, he's putting up very similar stats over the last three seasons, but this is the year they gave him a knot. I do want to give a lot of love to Bam Adebayo. Um, I do want to give a lot of love to Tyrese Halliburton, Julius Randle for being back. Uh, Bam Adebayo and Julius Randle, similar stories as far as like making an all-star appearance a few years ago, then falling out, and then making it back. You love to see that. And I guess Jalen Brown did that too, huh? Wow. That, that's kind of insane. Um, but to see Reese be the only first-time all-star in Eastern Conference is really cool. And then he came back yesterday and almost, you know, won a game against the Lakers. But Anthony Davis showed up, and that is going to lead us to the Western Conference. Because the Western Conference is a little bit more confusing as far as what their priorities are. Again, I do believe that defense played a part in this. Because Jaron Jackson Jr.'s average was 17-7. It's not like he's having some crazy account in stat season. But the impact on defense is ridiculous. Like, it's plus-minus when he's on the court. is like plus 11 and a half. Uh, they were the worst defense in the league when he was injured, came back. Now they're the number one defense. He's leading the league in blocks. He beat the allegations. The allegations were so crazy that the NBA had to come out and say, no, 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 no. Don't, don't blame the scorekeeper in Memphis. We got somebody even above him that goes through all the rebounds and, and blocks and steals to confirm it. And some people are conspiracy, conspiring because some people have the conspiracy. That somebody in Memphis put that together to get more people to, to watch Jaron Jackson Jr. highlights so they can realize how good of a defender he is. But on my own personal ballot, Jaron Jackson wasn't there. And I did the research. The way I be doing my All-Stars is I look at players that I think should be in the pool. And then I narrow down, okay, this person deserves this player. And Jaron Jackson was in my pool of players, but he didn't ultimately make it. The absolute locks out west for me were Shea, Dame, Lowry, Ja, Sabonis. They got all of those. It's once we start talking about the last two spots end up being Paul George and Jaron Jackson Jr. where I could see the conversations for a De'Aaron Fox. I could see a conversation for an Anthony Edwards. I could see a conversation for a Anthony Davis. Now, now Anthony Davis in a, is a, in a peculiar spot because he missed a ton of time. Um, if you've been looking at his games played as one of the reasons why he wasn't on the ballot. I mean, I don't, I don't know what's more important, games played or minutes played. Uh, Anthony Davis has played more minutes than Jaron Jackson Jr. on the season. He just has. Now, Jaron has played more games, but, you know, Jaron has the the one major flaw in his game is his inability to, to stay out of foul trouble. He's better this season than any year of his career, so he's getting better every single year. Um, but because of his only 27 minutes per game and Anthony Davis averaging 33 minutes per game, Anthony Davis, at the time of this recording, has played more minutes than Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron has all of the advanced stats over AD. All of them. But if you asked me straight up who's having a more deserving all-star season, considering both of these guys missed a ton of time and, and, and all of that, I am going to say Anthony Davis. There's no, there's no disrespect to, to JJJ or Block Panther, which is officially on his basketball reference now. Because if you've been around the channel for some time, you know I've always valued the defense on this channel. Rudy Gobert has been an all-star for over the, over the past like half a decade for me. Even though he's not a fun all-star caliber player, I do believe that we need to, to reward the guys that have been extra impactful on that side of the ball because that is the hardest place to be impactful. But even when that said, it's not like the gap between Jaron Jackson Jr.'s defense and Anthony Davis' defense is the same as the, the gap between James Harden's defense and Drew Holiday's defense. Jaron has been better defensively this season, but we're not about to act like that before he got injured, Anthony Davis wasn't top three in defensive player of the year. You know, he was also having an amazing defensive season. But again, we can go back to the same conversation um, between the Knicks and the Bucks that we just had. Should we give the Lakers two All-Stars considering they're not, are they, are they in the playing yet? Considering they're not even in the playing. Do they deserve two All-Stars being three games below 500? Or should we give it to the team that has been consistently at the one or two seed in the Western Conference? And that's exactly what the, what the coaches did. The coaches have been a team that have prioritized winning a ton throughout history and i think that's where they went with this one is the right mindset i i don't, I don't know i can't say that I, again i can't say they're wrong because jaron is having an all-star caliber season even if i think that anthony davis deserves it more the paul george versus De'Aaron fox or the paul george versus anthony edwards is another is another debate i believe that paul george is having a somewhat underrated season um 23 points per game five assists uh six rebounds i think his assist to turnover ratio is like two so it's not it's not it's not it's not even it's not even two uh less than two um but he's shooting 46 percent from the field 38 percent from three and 86 percent for free throw line he missed two big ones last night and then airball like two shots as well i it, <laughs> it's not it's not the perfect 
post announcing of an all-star appearance performance I've ever seen. But two weeks ago, when we did our official all-star ballot on our podcast, I did have Paul George as my last wild card spot. But since that time, I switched it to, to Anthony Edwards. Thing that sucks the most though is uh before the season started, I had De'Aaron Fox as like an all-star. This is gonna be the year where he did his thing, and I I wanted to see it so very bad, man. What a, what a great season for De'Aaron. I think what hurt De'Aaron Fox is that he had that what four-week stretch where he lost his jump shot, and now he's got it back again. But maybe the coaches just thought about that four-week stretch. It's like ah, he wasn't hitting shots. He was somewhat struggling, so that's why he didn't deserve it. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little sad for him, if I'm being honest, because I do think this is one of his best chances to get in. But they already have Sabonis. And again, I, I mean, that's one of the most winning teams in the Western Conference for sure. But I, I don't know if they wanted to give two to the Sacramento Kings. I don't know. When was the last time the Kings did have two All-Stars? That's a good question. I'm going to go back to Paul George versus Anthony Edwards. And, and maybe I am prioritizing the availability and consistency from Anthony Edwards over the past oh he, he I don't know if he's missed a game this season I don't think he has but over the past month and a half two months Anthony Edwards has been amazing um and, and maybe that's my recency bias compared to Paul George I, I don't really know but it felt better to give it to Anthony Edwards versus PG in that case Paul George's advanced stats are amazing you know he's still great on both sides of the ball whether you like it or not so again he's another guy having an all-star caliber season who else uh, Devin Booker was a guy that got snubbed because I know he's missed a bunch of time recently he's got about the same amount of minutes as a guy like anthony davis or a guy like jaron jackson jr it just so happens that he's currently injured um but i mean when it comes to overall impact you can see how bad they can be without him on the court so i know some people are upset about that i think those were the the biggest snubs and everything now we don't know for sure when kevin is coming back we don't know for sure when z is coming back so let's start talking about the injury replacements because the way it works is that they'll pull a reserve to be in the starting lineup for those two dudes because they're both starters and then adam silver becomes the guy that selects the two new injury reserves so it's not based on media it's not based on fans it's not even based on coaches it's based on the head honcho which i guess he's not the head honcho because he works for the owners it's it's for the guy that looks like he's the head honcho and throughout the history i'm looking at it right now for injury replacements He's, of course, went to the same conference, which, again, in this world, conferences shouldn't matter anymore. But he's also has a reputation of going to the same position. So we're talking about losing Kevin Durant. We're going to move somebody from the reserve into the starting lineup. I'm assuming it's going to be Joel Embiid. He deserves it anyway. And now we're starting to look at the reserves that can that can take the spot. And this is where things get interesting. Was DeMar DeRozan a guard? Was he a four? Because if DeMar DeRozan was a guard, move him over to four and then bring in a guard. Go get James. It's already a guard-heavy conference anywhere, guard-heavy all-star event. Go get James. I think James is the number one guy for the Eastern Conference when it comes to injury replacements. If if we're, if we're strictly sticking on he's going to replace that four with a forward, it's probably going to be Jimmy Butler. We didn't even really talk about Jimmy Butler in this video. I, I had to make an executive decision between Bam and Jimmy. Who do I prioritize more for my own personal battle? And I, and I used availability as the big thing, and I gave it to Bam out of bio. But J uh, Jimmy Butler's having as good of a season as, as anybody um, when it comes to that front court spot. So I wouldn't be surprised if it was him also. But what about Porzingis? Does Porzingis get a little bit of love? A name that I ain't seen on Twitter one time in the last 24 hours. Does Porzingis get a little bit of love? Six game win streak actively for the for the Washington Wizards. He's been really consistent. He's been relatively healthy for the first time in a long time. I doubt it, but I'm just saying he's another guy. Or do we give it to Pascal Siakam, who probably should have been there in the first place? Out West, I would assume that they're bringing Larry or DeMontis Sabonis to the starting lineup to take Zion Williams' spot, which is dope. I'm excited for the draft because I believe that whether it's Larry or DeMontis Sabonis, whoever gets moved up to that starting spot, if, if Z isn't healthy, is going to be the last pick of the starters. I, I hate to say it, but I think that's how it's going to go. And I do believe that the injury replacement will be Anthony Davis because he's Anthony Davis and the Los Angeles Lakers are the biggest market in basketball. And again, he was on my back. He was deserving to be an all-star. Um, but I think... He missed it last year as well, right? This will be back-to-back -back seasons where AD didn't make the All-Star game. And again, he's having an amazing year if it wasn't for his injury. So again, they, does Adam Silver care about the three games under 500 for the Lakers? I doubt it. He's Adam Silver. He's going to do what he thinks is best for, for his league's growth. And Anthony Davis and them jersey sales is probably up there on the list. His priorities. I don't know. There, there's too much to really talk about. And I feel like I'm forgetting some names. I'm feeling like I'm forgetting some storylines. Regardless, um, at the end of the day, there's going to be fan bases and people that are upset. It's just it's just the nature of things. I've actually been seeing J.J. Redick push the idea of expanding um, the all-star uh, pool be because, well, the league is, is more deep for one. But there are more teams now than it was 
when this when this rule was incorporated i mean he made a video on old man and the three um that i watched bits and pieces of it was a long ass video so i watched the whole thing um basically making the argument that the amount of people that we have right now is the same as when there was like 20 teams in basketball so I'm, i might be exaggerated but something similar to that um and now that we have 30 teams and we have so much talent across the league he don't he don't want to add uh 12 more roster spots but one or two would probably go a long way but then again we still playing a game of basketball so if we add another player or two that means minutes are gonna get cut jimmy butler not gonna play again uh then fray van vliet only played three minutes the year he was he was an all-star so i don't know there's pros and cons to every single thing but i'm always open um because again there are so many people that are deserving that they're gonna miss that all-star 2023 on their resume let me know what you think i'll be in the comment section like i always am